parents didn't care, didn't want to see sneak out the window at night when they sleep in there. They're all in the bed, they're Christian, praising God, their daughters, safe and sound in the room next to them, and she's out hanky panky in with some of the guys in the neighborhood. And then everything nobody found out nothing until she started popping. Pop goes the weasel. She started popping. Come on. Started showing. We don't get away with nothing, church. Nothing. We don't get away with nothing. So don't go there. Amen. Spare yourself of the shame, the misery, the pain, the guilt. Having to raise a child without a father most of the time. Because all he wanted was one thing you gave it to him. Why pay for it when I can get it for nothing? Yeah. Don't you think of yourself a little bit more than that, young people? Yeah, that's right. yeah, let me move on. Mm -hmm. Amen. Somebody say, mm-hmm. <laughs> Woo, glory be to God. So God gave them coats of skin and clothed them. Listen, it gets better. It gets better. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6 says, But we all, I like this, we are all, every one of us, preachers, lay people, we're all as unclean things. And all our unrighteousness is like filthy rags. And we all do fade like a leaf. Like Adam and Eve. Their leaf didn't cover them. It faded. It wasn't good enough. We fade like a leaf. Listen. And our iniquities, which is gross sin, like the wind have taken us away. Taken Our sin just takes us away. The devil's like just blow, blowing on us. We fly away. Why? Because of sin. We all come short of the glory of God. None righteous, the Bible says, no, not even one. We're all unclean. Thank God it doesn't stop there. <clears throat> I can't get so can I get a witness from somebody? Amen. 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 It doesn't stop there. Amen. Because the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins, all unrighteousness. When we confess our faults and our sins to the Lord. Amen? It's like we've never sinned. The slate gets clean through the blood of Jesus. We don't need coats of skin when we have the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah? Amen. Thank God for the blood or we'd still be under the curse. Still be under the law. But I hope you've got the blood. I hope you've got Jesus. Amen? Amen. Just like in the Old Testament when the, when the Pharisee was going to kill all the, the Jews and different things and, and the Lord and the Lord was going to kill them, and, then, and then all the uh, uh, Pharaoh and all the Egyptians. What did he tell the What did he tell the Israelites to do? Put the blood over the doorposts and the door lentils. And when the death angel comes by, there's always a death angel. Mm -hmm. Today there's death angels. Yeah. That's why you need to be covered in the blood, because he said when he sees the blood, he'll pass by your house, and the firstborn will not be killed. But if you don't put the blood, if you don't be obedient, you'll die like the sinner. You'll die like the Egyptians. So they put the blood. They were obedient. They were fearful of their God. They should be. And they put the blood and they were obedient. And the death angel passed by. But he stopped at every firstborn child in the camp of the, of the Egyptians and killed them all. Including Pharaohs who they thought he was, he thought he was a God. Ooh, God ain't playing. No. God ain't playing. No. Hallelujah. The blood. Apply the blood to the doorpost of the door lentils of your heart today. And that death angel will pass you by. He'll pass you by. Ooh, my Lord, my Lord. Let's move on. See, good works ain't going to get you to heaven. Coming to church today don't qualify you for heaven. Reading your Bible don't qualify you for heaven. They're all good things, but that's not how you get to heaven. Can I get a witness? Yeah, you get to heaven through the blood of Jesus yeah. by being born again, by accepting Him as your love and Lord and Savior and living the life, amen, that God has called you to live. All that other stuff would be in vain. You might as well go out like Paul said. If it wasn't for Jesus, I might as well go out, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow I'm going to die. 
Let me go do my thing as they call it today. But because of Jesus, we know better. And that restrains us. Amen. Even when we slip and fall, we can find our way back, hopefully real quick, repent and move on with the blood of Jesus cleansing you. So that when the death angel does come, he looks, he says, ah, got the blood on, got the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, pass on by. Let's look for somebody else that don't have the blood. Ooh, in order for us to be covered and clothed in Christ's righteousness, Christ had to die for us. Just like that animal had to die for Adam and Eve. Alright? So we see Jesus died for us. Hallelujah. And because of that, because of us being born again, amen, we don't need to have coats of skin because now we're robed in His righteousness. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Robed in His righteousness. Not leaves, not skins that will fade or get mildew or rot, but something that will last for eternity. And when you get to heaven, you'll get another robe. Hallelujah. A white robe was given to all. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So whenever the devil whispers in your ears to try to put you down or get you discouraged, because that's one of his tricks, get you depressed uh, and makes you think that life ain't worth living or God has slipped by you and forgot all about you. I got news for you. Amen. Jesus is still on the throne. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But there's a price to pay for coats and robes. Amen. We see that quickly with the story of Joseph. Joseph's dad loved him, favored him among the other brothers. Okay? He loved him. And uh, the brothers got jealous of him. And uh, because his daddy gave him a coat of many colors which represented authority. And he was the youngest. Next to Benjamin later. He was the youngest. And he, he, that represented authority. Do you know you got authority, church? Amen. And it also represented favoritism. They didn't get a coat of many colors. And we found out later why. Their hearts were hardened. Joseph had a tender heart towards God and his daddy. And he was obedient. It pays Amen. We say we were paid. A man, 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 man went to prison. A man fell in a pit, and they tried to sell him, and all that. Yeah, you're. In other words, you're going to go through things in this life, but I'd rather go through them with Jesus than without Him, because at the end of it, everything, God raised him up to be a mighty man of God Amen. that saved this whole nation Amen. from starvation and famine. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to go through things, but I'd rather go through it with with a robe of righteousness Amen. on than. A, coat of skin Amen. and sin. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So we thank God for the lesson in that. Ooh, the Lord tells us, listen, the Lord tells us also that what He's going to do is He's going to exchange our filthy rags. Yes. Hmm. He's going to exchange them for the robe of righteousness. But even with a robe of righteousness, like Joseph, when he had the coat of many colors, and he was so happy and proud of that. You know, sometimes we can get too proud that we're children of God even, and we take it and we get prideful with it, and self-righteous in that sense. You know, and then we got to get chastised, or whatever happens, it has to happen to get us back on track, back on line. And so what happens is sometimes we give place to the enemy, and he comes in and gets us depressed, and gets us discouraged. And even worse, the phone calls that I get sometimes, not just from our own members, but others, from other churches that are ashamed to go to their own pastor. But they know that I wouldn't judge them. But they get depressed. And I often use this scripture that I'm going to use for you today. I take them to Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3. And all that pain, shame, guilt, whatever it might be, the Bible says, Amen. He gave them beauty for their ashes. There's an exchange going on when we repent. There's an exchange, exchange going on. He'll take that guilt and shame and pain and turn it in. He said he'll give you beauty for those ashes. He'll give you the oil of joy for mourning because you know Christians mourn sometimes. Yeah. Another word is grieve. They grieve. Yeah. Or they're sad. Yeah. Or they're discouraged. Or they're depressed. Yeah. Same thing. Amen? In Italian, it means the same thing. Yeah. All right? Yeah. And then it says, He's going to give them the garment. Listen, we're talking about coats. We're talking about robes. A garment. 
God's going to put a spiritual garment of praise on you for, listen, the spirit of heaviness. Amen. Think about that. Did you ever think of it this way? When we read that, we glance over, we take it for granted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a spirit mm -hmm. attached to that heaviness. Mm -hmm. It's a demon. It's an evil force that's attached to that depression, trying to take you out, trying to get you so depressed, so discouraged, that you'll kill yourself. That's what the devil's after. That's the if that in the spirit of heaven is, I don't know what is. And it comes right from the pits of hell. Right. You can't let it happen, church. Because my Bible says he will take that spirit of heaviness and replace it with what? Praise. A garment of praise. Notice here, but it's a spirit. It's a spirit. It's an evil force. It's a seducing spirit. Uh, trying to get you to overpower you, overtake you, and hold you captive. That's what the devil's job is. And I hate to say it, I don't even want to admit it, but I see it happening too often to too many Christians in our own country. Because somehow, some way, they got their eyes off of the real deal. Amen? The real truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Getting into that flesh. Just like Adam and Eve. Woo, it looked good. And it tasted good. But the Bible says that when you taste it, it's going to be sweet in your mouth, but it'll make you sick when it hits your belly. That's what sin does. Can I hear you? Of course it looks good. And the devil's going to put it and parade it right in front of your eyes, whatever it is. If it's lust, she's going to look good. He's going to look hot. If it's money, he's going to have you chasing rainbows all over the place. Look at Maybe it's over here. Maybe, maybe we want to sign up here. This is a pyramid thing here. Right? It's all about my... Ain't got no business in the house of God. Amen. Keep your business cards. Amen? Amen. And, uh, see what Jesus did to the money changers in, his, in the temple, didn't you? Amen. Yeah. Today, everything goes. Man. Everything goes. They sell this. They sell that. They have car washes. They have that. All these because they don't want to pay their tithes. We don't need a car wash. We need you to be faithful in your giving. Amen. Amen. One church was selling pumpkins, my God. Pumpkins. Yeah, we need money, man. We're raising money for such and such. I ain't going no pumpkin patch. <laughs> Pay your tithes. Ooh, get quiet on me and him now. <laughs> I know I hit him there. Talk to us, Jesus. Amen. Yep. Get him, Holy Ghost. Jesus. Come on. Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody on the internet. I ain't talking to nobody here. <laughs> nobody here. Y'all blessed. No. Hallelujah. I love when the Holy Ghost takes over, don't you? Yes. Well, I just get out of the way and let God do his thing. <laughs>